the mission of this show and the mission of everything I'm doing is to break down all the fashion stereotypes for female entrepreneurs so that we can use fashion and style for what it really is. It's an art form. And I think it's time that we start embracing it as such and really, really lean into style as self-care. Our brands are a reflection of who we are, where we're at. Our business absolutely is a reflection of who we are and where we're at. And our style simply is that it's a reflection of our outlook on life. Hello, Style Nation. Welcome back to another episode of Styled for Life with your girl, Katie. Today's episode is juicy for real because we're going to be talking about boobies and how to style them. So I've been having this conversation around necklines a lot lately and I wanted to turn it into a podcast. So I'm so glad you're here. Welcome to the show. If you're new to Styled for Life and Maybe if you've even been on this journey with me for the last going on four years, the assignment's always changing, right? We're always evolving. But the mission of this show and the mission of everything I'm doing is to break down all the fashion stereotypes for female entrepreneurs so that we can use fashion and style for what it really is. It's an art form. And I think it's time that we start embracing it as such and really, really lean into style as self-care, style as personal development, style as the quickest, easiest, most fun way to uncover who you are, what you like, what makes you jive so that you can build stronger, unshakable confidence and better connected brands, right? Because our brands are a reflection of who we are, where we're at. Our business absolutely is a reflection of who we are and where we're at in our lives. And our style simply is that it's a reflection of our outlook on life. And it's kind of scary (laughs) when I say that out loud. But when you see someone in public, you can start to make assumptions about their outlook on life based on what they're wearing. And that's good because we get to control that and no one else gets to control that narrative. So the goal here is to really talk about fashion psychology, break down the stereotypes. Um, This podcast is always hopefully and intended for inspirational mindset work. And of course, you know, all the style and advice you could ever fucking ask for. And that's what today's episode is, is necklines for your boobs. Um, So... The reason I really wanted to make this episode is if you haven't listened to the Nail Your Next photo shoot, one of the many episodes in there is about like how to choose your three outfits for your photo shoot. And I talk for a second around picking the best neckline, right? A lot of times when we're doing photo shoots, there's always an opportunity to do some headshots. And headshots, all you really have is from like waist up. And in this digital age we live in, a lot of times it's from chest up, right? Your necklines are really, really important. And I've just noticed the shift, especially as we head into summer, how we can really use this to amplify ourselves, amplify our confidence, amplify our message, and to just appear pulled together and intentional based on our necklines. And when you get really clear in your neckline, why this is important is because when you know these little teeny things, it makes creating your outfit formula as a busy entrepreneur super easy. Because my goal is to make, like I say this all the time, easy and fun. That's my formula. (laughs) That's my fashion formula is how do I make this easy and fun? So it's easy when we know exactly what necklines to pick, and then that becomes part of our outfit formula. Then that formula is, okay, V-neck plus skirt, V-neck plus jeans, V-neck plus um, shorts, whatever it is. So I talk about that in the Nail Your Next photo shoot. If you haven't downloaded that um, or tuned into that um, private podcast, a mini series, five episodes, super quick hitting. They're, each of them are in between five to seven minutes. And the goal is to give you super 
easy, actionable tips to execute in your next photo shoot. Or let's be honest, the next time you record a reel, the next time you're showing up on an IG live, the next time you're showing up on camera or video in any form or way, nay, your next photo shoot can help you. So go grab that. Katie just dialed dot com backslash nailed it and of course i'll put it in the show notes so let's hop in when it comes to body shape i avoid these episodes a lot because there's so many angles to take it there's so many different body types and there's so many different considerations and every single person is different so just want to, I feel like I'm making that, like I'm a doctor with a podcast and I have to make that like blanket legal statement that, you know, I'm not your doctor. So I'm not really your stylist. I'm unless you're, I'm your stylist, right? So we're going through giving some blanket advice here and you know intuitively what your body shape is because that's one thing that I have learned through all the women I've worked with. Intuitively, we do know what feels good to us and what doesn't feel good to us. But unfortunately, in the society we live in, we're always looking for validation. And nothing's wrong with that, but that's my core wound. I see you. So just take this advice and apply it to you where it feels good. I'll try to give some of those body considerations as we go through these necklines. But to keep it super simple for today's episode, I broke it into two groups. We're going to talk about necklines for large bust and necklines for small bust. And there's lots of different necklines that you can wear, but I really just wanted to focus on a couple of key ones to keep it super simple so that you can take this away and it could be really actionable because that's the goal here is keeping it simple and making it easy for you so you don't feel overwhelmed. So to be honest, I was like, do I start with big boobs or do I start with small boobs, right? I didn't want to start with big boobs because I have big boobs. And I was like, people are going to think I'm doing it because of me. So I flipped a coin and (laughs) maybe the energy came through, but I flipped a coin and the quarter said, start with big boobs. So we're going to start with big boobs. So we're going to talk about four necklines to choose if you have a larger um, bust and then one to avoid. And then we'll talk about that a little bit. So the goal when we're styling, no matter your body shape, um, no matter big, small, hips, boobs, whatever it is, it's to elongate and more importantly, to balance our upper and our lower body, right? We're always just looking for balance. Just like you're looking for balance in your work and home life, we're doing the same thing on our body. And I like to give the analogy to think about your home decor because it's really easy sometimes to get caught up in our body shapes and our body confidence. That's why I focus a lot of mindset (laughs) on the podcast. So think about just your living room, your bedroom, and how you would style that. You wouldn't put all of the furniture on one side of the room because now that side of the room is really bulky and heavy and it doesn't feel good. And then you're not just going to have like this empty space. And when you're designing a room, you take into things in consideration, like where are the windows? Where are the doors? We don't put all of our stuff by the window or by the doors, right? We use those as anchors in the room. So think of your body in the same way. It's This is the science to fashion, right? This is the math part of this. The one plus one equals two is we're really just trying to create balance. So now that I've bored you with like my four minute long body shape disclaimer, I'm just hyper aware of how sensitive this is. And when people think about getting styled or they come and they want to get styled, it starts with, I want to look good for this. But that's, yes, that's one outcome. (laughs) But it's always so much more than the clothes every single time. But that's what I love. And what I'm calling now deep fashion. This is deep fashion. This ain't shallow fashion. This is deep fashion. So I have to give you the body shape disclaimer. All right, so we're going to start with large boobs because that's what the coin flip said. Our goal is to elongate and balance the upper and the lower body. So there's one neckline that is queen, and it really doesn't matter what body shape you are or how big your boobs are or how small they are or shoulders and all of that. It is the V-neck. If you do not own a V-neck, please add V-neck neckline onto your summer basics list if you haven't already done your summer shopping 
if you've done your summer shopping and when fall comes and you're that organized that you do it in seasons, please look out for some V-neck lines, okay? V-neck is queen for all shapes, but especially queen for my ladies with the bigger boobs, right? It avoids bulk on our upper body because we're really trying to balance out our upper and our lower body, unless we have a really, really balanced shape already. What I love about V-neck is there's one rule in styling that I tell everyone all the time is an easy one, is you always want to look for opportunities to create diagonal lines on your body. Diagonal lines are gold. They break up the horizontal line. They make you look longer. They make you look, this is my go-to, they make you look longer, stronger, slimmer, faster, better, stronger, whatever your word or goal is. Diagonal lines always do that. So the V is literally just two diagonal lines. They create dream effects on our body. So when you have a V-neck on, not only does it not add bulk to your boobs, it also creates this lifted effect. I don't know about you, but I think we all could go with some lifted effects, you know, getting into our 40s and things start to shift and change. So if that's something that you're looking for, V-necks are really good for that. If you have a short neck, V-necks elongate the whole chest, delicatage, neck area. And I personally love a V-neck for the style aesthetic. If you have an edgy or style or you're looking for something dramatic, V-necks really give you that. And they're classic as well. But I feel like there's a lot of edge and drama that can come along with V-necks. Next up. If you have a larger breast, number two, neckline. And I'm only going to give you four because I don't want to overwhelm you. Number two is the scoop neck. So the scoop neck, it to me, is like the sister to the V-neck, right? It does the same thing. It breaks up the chest. But what it, it's a softer version of it. So I prefer edginess. I like that kind of like edgy, dramatic style. I obviously own a couple of scoop necks. But if your style aesthetic is more feminine or casual or boho or romantic, if any of those words like identify with you, the scoop neck might be your choice, right? But the thing with scoop neck that you have to be careful of, because it does an f- amazing job of breaking up your chest, but because it does have, um, it's more of just the softer curve line instead of the V lines. You want to make sure that it's not too deep because if the scoop neck gets lower than your cleavage, it will make your boobs look saggier than they really are. So it kind of does the opposite of what the V-neck does with adding that lift effect. So you want to make sure that it skims just across the top of the cleavage. Keep that in mind. That's hot styling tip. So if you have your V-neck, you have your scoop neck. The other one I've talked about this before, and I'm super hot on it, and I'm going to regret this in a couple years. <laughs> but I love one shoulder tops. One, I love how edgy they are, but two, they do an amazing job of breaking up your chest and upper body area, right? So I am at the my highest weight. This is the way I hit like when I'm postpartum, the highest I ever am, is the way I'm at currently. I've been here for like the last two years, so this is nothing new. But this is why I love one shoulders, because it creates such an optical illusion. I feel like it really breaks up my chest. I feel like it makes me look, my midsection look longer, all of these things. So the one shoulder shirts that are super, super hot right now really do an amazing job of breaking up chest. The only issue that we have for the big busted ladies is now we get into bra situations and a lot of people are like, oh my God, now I have to wear a bra. Well, I don't wear bras if I don't have to. So there's ways to get around this. I choose asymmetrical tops that have stripes, that have patterns, that have double layers, that have a lot of depth, maybe a lining with a crochet. So like it breaks it up and my boobs sit up enough. Or there's one shoulders that have built in bra tops and different things like that. There's ways around it. If you feel like your nipples are showing, we can get some fashion tape. You can always do a strapless bra and I have a recommendation for a strapless bra. But I knew if I mentioned this neckline that I couldn't not not mention (laughs) bra straps because when we do the one shoulder, it starts to um, beg of the question of like, well, what am I doing with my bra now? 
The other thing that you can do with the um, asymmetrical one shoulder is I had a client ask me the other day, well, what are the best necklines to wear under blazers, right? So this kind of sparked that conversation. And I was like, you know, she really wants to add in a little bit more sexiness and edginess to her look. I said, well, if you're going to keep the blazer on for the entire time and you're too scared to wear the whole, the one shoulder top without a bra, then you can t- absolutely keep the bra on, but you just have to know that you're going to keep the blazer on the whole time. And then you get the edginess and the breakup across the chest of the one shoulder top. And last but not least, the fourth neckline that I'm going to grace you with today from my ladies that had the fuller bust is the square neckline. So if you go back and you listen to Now Your Next Photo Shoot, or if you check out my photo shoot, the neckline that I have when I talk about using this shirt for all three looks is the square neckline. I love a square neckline. But the thing that you need to remember if you have on a square neckline is if you have broad shoulders, you probably want to avoid it because it will. It does create a box. The lines are very harsh. They work really well if you have a fuller figure and you feel more round, right? The square lines offset the roundness in the body. But if you do have broader shoulders with the bigger, fuller bust, you might want to avoid that because it could make you look even broader. And if you or someone who identifies as having a really square face. So it's so funny because we just did a face shape, um, like what glasses work and haircuts work really well for our face shape yesterday in the style squad. And everybody was like trying to figure out their face shape. So if you know, and chances are, if you know, then it's a pain point for you. But if you feel like your face is really square, you have a really square jawline, you definitely probably want to avoid the square neckline. So try out the scoop or try out the V. So those are the four I recommend if you have big boobs. I, why can't I say boobs like a fucking adult? <laughs> if you have big boobs, <laughs> those are the necklines I recommend. V-neck, scoop neck, any asymmetrical top, really. It doesn't just have to be one shoulder. It could be cold shoulder. Anything that's creating an asymmetrical line on your chest, square neck. And there's one that I want you to consider avoiding unless you're willing to break out all the styling tricks. And that's a turtleneck. Turtlenecks will make your boobs look lower and saggier than they are, or any high neck really will always do that. I love high necks. I think they look amazing on Zoom and on video. So if I am doing a high neck, I make sure that I have a really thick belt that I'm wearing right on my natural waistline, right above my boobs to break up my body. Or I'm wearing a really long, sleek necklace to create the V with the necklace instead of the shirt. So big boobs equal V-neck, scoop neck, asymmetrical necklines, square necklines, avoid turtlenecks unless you're going to make sure that you're styling appropriately. All right, let's talk to my smaller boob ladies. These are some of my favorite people on the planet. All right, so what we're doing here is we're drawing the eye up and again, we're balancing the upper and lower body. Absolutely not true for everybody, but some of the clients that I'm working with or have been working with for a while now have that triangle body shape where their chest and their shoulders are narrower and their hips and their butts are fuller, right? So we're constantly trying to balance out the hips and a booty and bringing the bulk and the depth up to our shoulders and our boobs to create the balance in our body. So five necklines that work wonders for you are one, the V-neck, because the V-necks look great on everybody because they do such a really good job of using that V to elongate. And in my opinion, I think every woman can be elongated, not because you need to look slimmer, but there's so much power in appearing taller. I just think that's super, super powerful. So a couple of tricks, though, that I have for you for my smaller boobs who want to use V-necks are if you have the V-neck, one thing you want to avoid is a super deep V-neck because a super deep V-neck can make you look even more small than you actually are. But the thing you can do here that doesn't work as well for larger boobs is 
add a camisole underneath it. So you get some visual interest. It's like adding bulk without adding fullness to your upper body, if that makes sense. And that's just a really fun way to experiment. It's a great place to layer. And again, add the visual interest to draw the eye up. Another neckline that I love for a smaller bust is off the shoulder. It's summertime right now. And there's so many cute off the shoulder dresses and tops. And this is a personal opinion. And I mean, I would never knock anyone for the style choices ever. I just think it looks so much classier and put together when someone with smaller shoulder frame and smaller um, boobs wears it off the shoulder. I love that look. And I'm just jealous because I just don't think I look as good when I wear those. So it looks really classy. It's the easy way to draw the eye up to the shoulder and the neckline. Now, if you have smaller chest but broad shoulders, you might want to avoid that off the shoulder look. If you do have broad shoulders and smaller bust, choose a boat neckline. Boat necklines are amazing to draw the eye up, build a little bit more um, depth up on our boob area. It sits higher and wider on your neck and it creates emphasis on our upper body. And it looks so good with a pair of dangly earrings because the boat neck just sits right there and really shows off your delicatage. And then you have these beautiful long earrings and it's just like drawing your eye in. And it's like super sexy without being sexy. If that's a vibe you're going for, we've been having that conversation in the style squad all the time. I was like, I actually want to be sexy, but not in a like, what people think of when they think of sexy. And I think this is another way that people with narrower shoulders and smaller busts can really pull that off and look so incredible. Boat neckline. Number four, cowl neckline. So it's so funny and I laugh a little bit when I say this is because I have a client I love to death and she loves cow necklines. I personally just don't. And I had to be like, why do I hate them so bad? <laughs> like, what is my aversion? And it's just because they don't do anything for me. They just add so much bulk up to my chest. And they're really drapey and flowy. So if you're really into like drapey, flowy, feminine vibes and you have a smaller chest, a great way to bulk up the chest area and create balance is to get a cow neckline. Chef's kiss. And last but not least, you ladies look amazing in turtlenecks, right? It's an amazing way to elongate the chest and neck area. Now, avoid turtlenecks if you have a short neck, though, because it could make you look like your neck's even shorter than it actually is. Now, I still prefer when people wear turtlenecks either to put a jacket on or some kinds of styling element like a necklace or a brooch or something like that because I do feel like it's just sitting there waiting. It's like a blank canvas just sitting there waited to be painted on. But high neckline, it doesn't necessarily have to be like a traditional turtleneck. When I say the words turtleneck, think of like just higher up neckline, halters with high necklines, so amazing. Holter tops are an amazing way to draw the eye up and make your shoulders look more powerful and balanced than to balance out the lower half of your body. So I hope this episode was helpful for you. Really quick, I'm just going to go through the necklines without all the explanations and style tips just so you have them. If you have larger bust, choose a V neckline, scoop neckline, asymmetrical, square, and avoid higher necklines unless you're doing the styling tips. For smaller bust, choose V necklines, off the shoulders, boat necklines, cowl necks, or a higher neckline like a turtleneck. Awesome. I hope that you guys really, really enjoyed today's episode. Now that you have all the neckline knowledge, You can go listen to Nail Your Next Photo Shoot and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about when I get to that episode. I believe it's episode three. And it's the private podcast, five-part mini-series. Each episode is super quick hitting. So you can get in and you can get out and you can get styled for that photo shoot and feeling amazing. I'll drop it in the show notes, katiejuststyled.com backslash nailed it. And if you're listening to this and you feel like this is great, but I have this or I have that, DM me, ask me, we can get into it. I would love, love 
to have these conversations. So just shoot me a DM, Katie Allen Stylist. And I will see you on the flip side. <laughs>